Hello everyone. In the last part, we have discussed about importance of SKU in the timing analysis. As I told you that uh, it also impacts setup and hold violation. So in this part, we will discuss about uh, the relationship between the SKU and the hold violation. So, so basic diagram is uh, same as we took it in our previous part. So this is our clock S, clock underscore S. And as I told you in the previous part also, I will consider this as a system clock for this particular system. So this system has a two flip flop. So for this, this is a clock source. The clock one, the same, it has a small delay. So I have added a small delay. So this is a like a shifted one. This is the clock one. Now, these are the setup and hold time. So if you remember like previous part, we assume that the setup and hold time are zero. But in this part, we are considering the factor of setup and hold time. So, what exactly is the setup time? So, uh, if you know that uh, every flip flop has a requirement that data should be stable at the D1 pin before the positive clock edge. So, if it is a positive edge flip flop, it will be the positive edge uh, related to the positive edge. If it is a negative edge, it will be the negative edge. So, here we are uh, talking about the positive edge. So every flip-flop has a requirement that data should be stable before positive clock edge at a certain time. And that certain time is the setup time of this flip-flop. Similarly, it has a requirement that data should be stable after the clock edge. And the, the time for which data should be stable, that is the whole time. So we will discuss about the setup and hold time and other uh, things later on but right now it is important to know that this setup and hold time it is a parameter of the flip-flop it is not uh, the parameter of the clock but it is associated with the clock so clock edge so whatever with the clock edge the setup and hold time that is with respect to the flop so for the clock one clock one if I am saying for this one so it is with respect to the FF1, so FF1 has this setup and hold requirement. So now if you have applied the D1 as an input and uh, here you can see that it is meeting all the setup and hold time requirement like this, this change in the data is before the setup time. It is constant after the, uh, till the hold time. So within this window, this data is constant within this window setup and hold time this this data uh, this uh, data is also constant same thing with the other edges now with the the moment this flip flop will get positive edge after the clk to q delay it the d1 output d1 data is transferred to the q1 now when the q data reaches at the q1 it will travel from q1 to d2 with a certain delay so that uh, that delay I have incorporated here so if, if you remember in the previous post, what we did, we, we were changing the delay between the Q1 and D2 and as per that, our D2 waveform was changing. But in this post, what we are doing, we are doing them in the reverse way. These five waveforms will remain constant. There will be no change. So for this particular flip-flop, this clock one, this clock underscore one, we will not change this part. We will not shift this part. D1 input data, we will not shift this. Clock to Q delay is constant. So the output waveform at the Q1, that is also constant. And we are assuming that there is no change in Q1 to D2 delay also. So there will be no change. Now we will see in terms of the skew. So we will, if, if you want to change the skew, we will change the CLK2 clock and then we will see whether it is meeting the setup or hold requirement. So in this post, we will only talk about the hold one. So now this is CLK2 clock. So right now we are assuming that we are taking a case where there is no slope. So we are starting with the skew equals to zero and then we will increase the skew slowly and then we will do the analysis. So if there is no skew, so as per the requirement so this data so this d2 data is going to capture with this particular edge so you can see one the, these are the same edge 
So data launched by the launch flip-flop with the first edge, it is launched by at this particular edge, is going to capture with the second edge. So this data D2 is going to capture with this second edge and now after when it is going to capture after the C2 CLK to Q delay of FF2 it will give the output as a Q2. So <clears throat> here in the D2 also you can see that it is also meeting the set all the setup and hold requirement. There is no change in this window. There is no change in this window also. There is no change in this window also. Now this this data is going to be captured with the fifth edge. Now we will discuss. Uh, I just uh, remove that particular clock so the corresponding Q2 output also. But for the reference purpose, which we will discuss uh, uh, later on, I just uh, made as a dotted one. And I just changed this thing as a CLK to Q plus uh, TDP that is the delay between the data path delay that is Q1 to D2. Now I shifted the clock that means in one way I added a skew. So now there is a clock skew. So between the CLK1, CLK2 I added a clock skew and you can see that this edge, edge is shifted. So if you will shift this edge there will be no change in the D1, Q and D2 but there will be a change in the Q2. Now this data, this Q2, this D2 data is going to capture at this particular edge. So if you remember when this uh, edge was here, it was capturing at this particular point and this distance, this difference was CLK to Q delay. Now the edge shifted here, it came here. So the CLK to Q delay is going to be calculated from this particular point onward. So you will add CLK to Q delay here and you will get the Q2 here. So there is a shift in the Q2 also. So you added some skew in the both the clock that means you increase, I would say you increase the skew, you are delaying the Q2 output also. Now let's take the another case. Now you again shifted clock is Q, you increase the clock is Q for the CLK2. Now this data is going to be captured with this particular edge. And when we are going to capture, then you can see this part. So this data, this data is at the edge of hold violation. Hold violation in the sense now let us suppose if this edge shifted little bit toward the right hand side. So what is going to happen? This data, this change in the data will be in this yellow line. This is stripe. It will be somewhere in the yellow stripe. So everywhere you can see. It will come here, it will come here and everything will be in a yellow stripe. As we have discussed what is the whole time? Whole time is data should be stable within this particular window and if you will change anything here, if you will change anything in this particular window, that means there is a hold violation. So now from here you can see very easily that if we will increase the clock skew further, there will be hold violation. So this is at the edge of the hold violation. Okay? From this edge, there is a CLK to Q delay and you will get the Q2 output. So now from this, you can make out the two, two things. The first thing is, if you will increase the skew, there is a possibility of hold violation. And obviously, if you will decrease the skew, so possibility of hold violation decreases. That is the one thing. Second thing is, if you will increase the skew, you can see that the output Q2 that is also delayed by the same amount. So initially Q2 when there was no skew, Q2 was at this position. You add some skew here, it came at the B position. And uh, from the diagram you can easily make out that the amount of skew you added here, it's the same delay you have added here. Similarly, you have increased the skew further and you can see that it shifted from A to C. 
so as you increase this q your q2 output will be delayed and obviously if your output is delayed it will affect the next stage also okay so i can make one more statement with the the delay in the q2 it has a dependency of the clock skew so that means if you have a system and you need the output at a certain time so you have to make sure that your clock skew is with respect to that so let us suppose you want the output of a circuit after 5 seconds but there is a some skew between those two flip flop again at 3 seconds so that means you have only a small small margin of 2 seconds so you have to close your combinational logic you have to choose your flip flops in terms of clock to queue delay the setup and hold violation everything within the 2 seconds itself because already you have uh, wasted i would say 3 seconds in the clock skew okay so this is this is the part of the hold violation similarly we will discuss about uh, the setup violation like how the skew is going to affect the setup uh, violation in the next post thanks a lot